Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to the Thursday edition live stream. My name is Sarah Smith and I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. And today I'm talking to you about the plant of the week. So every Thursday I've been covering the plant of the week here at Rogers Gardens. Uh, we are doing this really fantastic hummingbird summer program here. If you've been watching these, you're well aware of that. Um, we have, oops, our speaker just dropped. Um, this is what happens when you do things live. Um, we have a different plant uh, that we introduce to you every single week that we feature. Um, when you come in for that week, we'll have a really big abundance of all kinds of beautiful varieties of that particular plant. Um, in the middle area of the garden here, uh, we have all the hummingbird plants gathered together. Uh, so it's really, really fun experience to come in and see all the different plants, all the beautiful hummingbirds. Hummingbirds um, would make the best gardeners in the world because they like really beautiful flowers. So uh, it's just such a really great setup. And in the morning and all through the day, but especially in the mornings, the hummingbird activity is absolutely crazy down there. So it's really fun to walk through and see all the different hummingbirds and the butterflies. So the hummingbirds and butterflies tend to like the same plants. So we have tons of monarchs too, uh, especially with all the native milk we'd ha we have planted here and we sell here uh, lots of activity there as well. So today's plant of the week is all the butylons. So it's all this plant right here and here. It's a really beautiful plant. If this whole time you've been watching these and thinking, gosh, I have a lot of shade and most of the stuff we've been talking about so far is all full sun, you're in luck this week. So this plant really appreciates some shading. Uh, they call it the Chinese lantern tree. It's called flowering maple. There's a lot of different common names for it, but the botanical name is a butylon. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties of it, a lot of different colors, a lot of different sizes, heights. Uh, the variegated leaf, I love this spotty variegated leaf. I'm gonna look down, it's uh, Thomas I. I always forget what this one uh, is called, this variegated one, but so, so pretty. Um, the tiger eye, which is this one here, um, has a really beautiful striping on the flower. Um, I have a little baby one here too. Um, so we have them in all different sizes. Um, and I was watching the hummingbirds um, just the other day actually drinking the nectar from this and it's really funny to watch the way they actually drink the nectar from this one. Um, they actually have to come up underneath it and go straight up into it and they tend to kind of hit it in multiple spots around the flower. Uh, it was really funny to watch that little one do that and he was a tiny little baby and he was going up and he was going around about three times to each flower uh, just totally not giving a care about what I was doing. I probably could have reached out and just grabbed him. He had like no idea he was even standing there. Um, but it's such a beautiful, beautiful plant. Uh, it can be really versatile and can be grown in a lot of different kinds of shapes. So it can be grown very shrubby. Um, it can be grown like a patio tree. So this one here, um, we have trimmed up. So the bottom is cleaned up, but it has a nice high head. Um, it could be grown in a pot, it can be grown in the ground. So there's a lot of different things that this plant can do for you. Um, it's a uh, tropical type plant, so it grows in warm kind of tropical areas, uh, but definitely appreciates some shade. Doesn't do well with a very windy area either. So if you have an area where you know it's kind of like a wind tunnel in your house, this plant's not gonna be very happy there. The leaves can be a little bit sensitive to the wind um, and they're a little bit on the brittle side. Uh, so make sure that it has some protection definitely appreciates some afternoon uh, shading um, but can be grown really tall so um, I have a friend here who you all should know if you watch the live stream Suzanne hi Suzanne she has a really really beautiful one in her backyard that she has trimmed up like this really gorgeous tree right outside her kitchen window so it's really kind of amazing uh, whenever we're there they're hanging all at that kitchen uh, window level and it's the tiger eye variety so it's so so pretty to stand there and see all the flowers and then see all the hummingbird activity too just right at that window right there um, so it can be grown like a tree it can even be almost like a spellate and vined onto things uh, because it is uh, a little bit um, herbaceous so it's it, it, it's it is technically a woody plant but it can be easily manipulated uh, so it can be grown in all different kinds of forms um, what's really nice about this one too is that um, it keeps the leaves year-round and the flowers almost year-round it slows down a little bit in the winter time but you mostly have flowers definitely 
summer uh, or sorry spring summer through fall and even some a little bit in the winter time so it's one of those plants that's just going to always give you kind of some pop and some color especially the variegated one i am just a sucker for this one i think it's so so pretty uh that apricot up against those colored leaves is just so great and they come in pinks uh they come in cream colors they come in yellows they come in really really deep reds um when you look at them they almost kind of look a little bit like a hanging bell hibiscus if you look up inside them they have that really beautiful stamen inside that's so pretty so uh all the different uh pollinators really like these as well um but i really really love these two particularly so these are the two that i picked but i grabbed um we have some five gallons we got in some really nice one gallons um just be aware of how big they get so it can be a little bit deceiving this one here and this one here that's way above my head are the same plant <laughs> so be prepared but if you want to kind of shape yours and manipulate yours into the shape that you particularly want it's nice to start this way they're pretty fast growing as well um, you can see this one here is way above my head uh, this can be about uh, max is around like 12 15 feet um, the variegated ones a little bit smaller I think this is a six to eight footer um, on this one um, but they tend to be relatively pest free too which is pretty amazing um, they do like good uh, draining soil, but they're not really picky about their soil either, uh, which is really nice. So as long as it drains well and you're keeping it kind of consistently moist, but not too wet, uh, they don't want to be kind of smothered out by too much um, water. Uh, but they're definitely not a a particularly drought tolerant plant necessarily they can get a little crispy on the ends um, and again that wind also doesn't do them any favors so make sure you keep them out of in a windy area especially when we have those Santa Ana winds uh, that can really kind of ruin these nice soft leaves uh, they have a little bit of a fuzz to it too and it's just I'm just so obsessed isn't that cool um, fertilizer wise um, they really like the flowering mix. They can handle a little bit of acidity. Um, I think just using the rose and flower mix and adding a coffee grounds every now and then is a good idea. Don't overdo it on the coffee grounds. Um, maybe doing that once a month will be totally fine through the growing season. I would slow down in the winter time. Same thing with the flowering uh, fertilizer. This will encourage a lot of flowers. Um, they can handle a good amount of shade, but if you have it in too much shade, speaking of flowers, uh, they'll tend to be a little thin and you will not have as many flowers so they really appreciate some amount of direct sunlight that's going to keep them fuller and keep them flowering a whole lot more like you can see on this one this has tons and tons and tons of buds on it um, so if it's getting at least four hours of morning sunlight it'll be really really happy hot afternoon sunlight probably a no-go for these guys uh, that will get them a little bit on the crispy side um, but yeah they can handle the full shade but eh, it's gonna be a little thin uh, and it's not gonna have as many flowers as you probably want it to have in the full shade like that um, if you're doing uh, something in a pot just regular potting mix will work totally fine um, they would prefer not to sit in a saucer of their own water so if you have a pot that has a saucer in the bottom get rid of that saucer add a little bit of pot feet to pop it up off the ground so it can drain really freely and it's not sitting in its own water uh, salt tip burn uh, is can definitely show up on these guys and really most plants do not want to sit in the own water that has drained out the bottom of the pot that creates a lot of salt problems uh, that creates a lot of overwatering problems because then the plant winds up wicking that back up inside and it never fully dries out so I always tell people because people are always concerned oh I can't find a saucer for the bottom of this pond I said that's actually a good thing <laughs> just throw some pot feed underneath it um, we have really nice ones that are pretty invisible that you can just slide up underneath you don't even see them um, so it makes it really nice because it can drain really freely um, um, also, two saucers wind up leaving those condensation rings once you remove them anyway. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to do this to protect my nice travertine, you know, tile or whatever. But if you move that, you'll see a nice big condensation ring, almost like you left a big glass of water there. So having it on pot feet's a lot better uh, for your uh, travertine or concrete over time anyways um, we are doing this totally live so we are open for some questions if you guys put your questions down below I do want to let you know before we get to that though that we are starting to get ready for Halloween already can you believe that it's so crazy um, but I'm super super excited for it September 3rd is gonna be
be our official day for Halloween opening. Um, I keep peeking in there and seeing all the beautiful things that they're doing in there. I just can't wait. I'm a huge Halloween fan. Also too, I wanna let you know that this Saturday, uh, we are going to be doing a live in-person seminar, both Suzanne and I. So you'll see both of us live and in person. Uh, we do it Saturday, uh, 9.30. It's gonna be in the amphitheater um, here at Rogers Gardens. And we're gonna be talking about plumerias. Uh, so you get to come in, see us live. Uh, for everybody who comes in in person, you get a 10% coupon to use that day for any purchases that you make. Um, and we'll be talking all things plumerias, how to take care for them, how to propagate them, how to fertilize them. Uh, they're a lot easier than you think. <laughs> um, but it's really going to be a really fun event. We're going to have a lot of different plumeria varieties here too to uh, look at and you can purchase uh, as well. If you can't make it in person, we will be live streaming it. Uh, so if you're too far away, or you're just not a morning person, that's fine. You can still live stream it. You just won't get that awesome coupon. Uh, so I want to make sure that I let you guys all know about that first too. And then do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah. The first question is, can you just rename, state the name of yeah, the plant? <laughs> yeah. So I know maybe some of you come in a little bit late and I tend to just burst right into it. Uh, this is a butylon. So that is the botanical name, a butylon. All these here are butylon plants. Uh, they also call them Chinese lantern trees. They also call them flowering maple trees um, as well because it has kind of a beautiful maple shaped sort of leaf. Um, it is a tropical type plant, um, but works well in a lot of different varieties. I don't necessarily look at this plant and think it screams tropical to me, even though that's the kind of environment that it grows in um, because it has such a beautiful maple shaped leaf uh, but the flowers are so pretty flowers almost year round uh, spring summer and fall and still a little bit in the winter time does not go dormant so you have foliage year round um, and is very versatile in shape so it can be a big bush it could be a short little bush if you keep it compact and keep it cut back uh, it could be grown like a little tiny tree even though it's technically a shrub um, it can even be grown a spalliate or even vined onto an arbor for example because it is very um, easy to manipulate um, how it grows. So it's um, a little bit brittle, so make sure you keep it out of too much wind. Um, and then make sure that it's getting a little bit of morning sun and afternoon shade. It can handle full shade, but you're not going to get as many flowers. Uh, so it's something that likes to kind of be protected underneath a tree, another large tree. Underneath maybe, say, a um, Japanese maple tree would be great because you're going to give it some dappled uh, filter filtered sunlight, that would be fantastic for it as well. All right. Um, I keep getting rodents eating my baby flowers. I start yes. from most seeds mm -hmm. and they've been getting eaten up. Yep. Any advice? Yeah. So um, this is definitely a plant too that can be um, really appetizing to rabbits. Uh, so if you have something where it's bushed all the way down to the ground and foliage all the way to the ground, rabbits definitely go for this guy. If you have it trimmed up like a patio tree, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, when it comes to warm bodied <laughs> pest problems, so rabbits, deer, uh, rats, mice, any of those kind of things. Honestly, the best thing to protect that is physical barriers. Uh, there's really not any kind of miracle type spray that is going to work for any long periods of time. Um, physical barriers, uh, trapping, they do even sell, um, you know, the kind traps that trap the animal into the cage instead of killing the animal. Um, so, but adding some sort of physical barrier around it. Um, even things like if it's little and you're waiting to grow it really big, um, putting um, like chicken wire around it will help. Um, not for the tiny little guys, unfortunately, they can almost get through anything. Um, if I had some kind of miracle answer, I'd be a millionaire. We get this question all the time. I battle uh, a lot with uh, the small little critters in my garden, especially my tomato garden. Um, so I just I put bags around my tomatoes. Um, I just get those little, they're wedding gift bags that people use for favors and things like that for showers and stuff that just have a little drawstring. And I put those over my tomatoes and pull it. Um, if you have something like this uh, that you're trying to protect, putting some sort of cage around it. I know it doesn't look great, uh, but in 
the beginning when it's super tender and young, that will definitely help. But physical barriers, trapping, that's really kind of about it. Things like cayenne pepper, mint sprays, things like that. I've never had those work for me. I know that they sell those a lot on the market, uh, but they just, they don't tend to work. I've tried them. I've tried the little satchels of mint and things like that, and it just didn't do anything. They honestly don't really care about it. Uh, so it can definitely be um, a project <laughs> and I can understand your pain because I've dealt with it and I'm dealing with it with my tomatoes. Uh, but that's really kind of the best answer I have for you, unfortunately. Um, also to bird netting, you can use bird netting too, if you can't get your hands on, um, you know, chicken wire, that's just too hard to manipulate. Uh, we sell the bird netting too, and that helps too. Okay, that seems to be all the questions for nice. today. Thank you. You're very welcome. So yeah, Halloween opening coming up soon, September 3rd. I'm super duper excited for that. Uh, Christmas opening is going to be coming pretty soon. It's amazing to think that we're already there, right? Uh, Christmas opening happens in October. Uh, so you can even at the very end get Halloween and Christmas at the same time, which is kind of amazing. Um, but yeah, make sure that you sign up for that email list because you'll know all the fantastic dates of all the really cool things we have coming up uh, and all the different fun things we have going on here. Um, you also know about the new plants of the week and all the different things even happening at the farmhouse. Uh, so that's really kind of a cool thing to uh, be a part of and, and get the first in the know about that too. Um, we always post all these videos obviously on our Instagram and our Facebook page. So if you have any friends that are really into hummingbirds, uh, especially someone who has a shady garden who's been kind of lamenting that I can't get any hummingbird plants in my shade garden. You absolutely can. Um, make sure you tag them down below and let them know about this. Um, also check out our YouTube page. We do so many fantastic videos there, not just our live streams, but we do all kinds of really beautiful videos uh, that really work year round. Uh, we just did one recently about how to take care of your citrus. Uh, I'm going to be a new one, doing a new one coming up called um, the watering wise garden trends for 2021. I had to think about the name of that. Uh, so that one will be posted pretty soon. And those are really beautiful, well edited, uh, gorgeous videos. Every time I see those, I think, wow, that's that's me, that's here, it's so gorgeous. Uh, it's really, really fun to see those uh, videos. Suzanne and I do those. We even have um, a lot of different guests come in who do specialty things about orchids and things like that too. So it's great stuff there as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate uh, having you with me every Thursday morning. It's been really, really fun. It's been really fun doing all the live uh, in-person seminars again and talking to all the people who are behind the camera who I never get to see. Uh, uh, getting to see them in person has been really, really fun. I really appreciate it. Um, and be well and be safe and happy gardening, everybody. Bye.